Hi, in this particular exercise, we're going to talk about using geoprocessing techniques such as intersects and buffers to create a weighted index model. We can look at an exercise here. This is North Carolina Central University campus. We're going to try to follow along a thesis that someone's working on here. They're looking at a location to, pot to potentially site a Wi-Fi lab on campus. And you can see our Wi-Fi labs here are highlighted in this rose color here. And I extracted these from NCCU buildings and looked at a particular attribute that had them. I was looking at some very broad and coarse generalizations in which to place one of these locations. And I want to look at, it had to be near parking. You can see in this black area here, these are all the parking decks right here. You can see these are all the parking areas and the parking decks right here. And so one of my considerations was I wanted them to be close to a parking area because people are going to want to walk to those and you're going to want to walk to a building where you can park closer to. And previously in proximity, and multiple ring buffer here, this uh, tool right here, this is my buffer that I created around my parking areas here. And I created these at 50 foot intervals. And when I open up the attribute table here, you can see that I have a distance, an object ID, and a park buffer. This is the score that I gave it. So you can see that 10 is going to be, have a closest, have, have the highest score because it's closest, because okay? we want to basically create an area that's going to have higher scores with relationship to lower scores. So in this object ID 10, which has a five, uh, five between 450 and 500 feet, that's going to earn a score of 1. So eventually what we're going to do is run some basic overlay operations so we can look at areas that have the highest score in relation to each other. You can see I just added a new buffer ID, a uh, park buffer field, and actually I calculated using the 11 minus the object ID. You can see they go in numerical order from the smallest to the largest, so I can't really just make this object, I really just can't calculate this park buffer to be the object ID because, well, this is going to be the lowest score. So I had to kind of think about a little bit how I was going to sign the score. I can also open up an edit session, just hand type these in, but I wanted to automate this process here. Another consideration, and you can see the, what these rings look like here. Another consideration that I wanted to do was I wanted to be close to sidewalks. Okay, so here are my sidewalks here, and once again, I created a multiple ring buffer around my sidewalks. So areas that are closer to sidewalks are going to earn higher scores than areas that are further away. And you can see I did the same thing again here using 50-foot buffers. And I have an SW buffer here called sidewalk buffer. Highest earns a score of 10 all the way down to 1. And one of the things I want to do, I want to find areas that are close to both parking and sidewalks. And what I'm going to do here is run an intersect here. Okay, and when we talked about the intersect, it's a basically it's a sp it acts as a spatial or Boolean AND function. So, areas that are spatially satisfied by this multiple ring buffer for sidewalks, as well as the multiple ring buffer for parking lots that have to satisfy both of these are going to be intersected. And we're going to see what's going to happen when we also intersect the attributes with this particular feature here. So I'm going to click on intersect. And what I'm going to do is intersect my sidewalk multiple ring and my sidewalk buffer. And for now, I'm just going to save it in this temporary location. And this is a little bit more um, resource intensive than running a buffer or weighted index model for, say, a raster operation here. And you can see what I have right here. Now, this is what I have, okay? And this is the result of my output. You can see that for my sidewalks, we can see I got rid of some of the areas in my side. And I'll X out of this here and X out of this here so I can give myself a little bit more space. Zoom to my full extent. So you can see when I look at the output for this intersect operation, you can see what I have going on here. It's only going to include this area here. And you can see I got rid of some of my sidewalks here because it's not part of my parking buffer here. Okay, so it, it only includes spatially both of them. Now, attribute-wise, let's see what we have. Okay, and now when I open up this attribute table here, okay, well I've got a si and I've got a sidewalk, and I've got about a hundred different features that were created from this. Okay, about a hundred different features here that were created. Now I have a park buffer here, and I have a sidewalk buffer here. So say I were just to highlight this particular polygon right here. 
you can see that it has a park buffer of 10 and a sidewalk buffer of 1. That means it's pretty close to a parking lot, but very far away from a sidewalk. Okay, and we want to start to look for areas that have high areas for both of those. Okay, and what I'm going to do here, and you can see there's a lot of other kind of junk in here. Okay, the distance we don't care about because we just use that to derive also the same thing with the distance here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new field, and I'm going to call this, I don't know, I'll call it a, I'll give it the name score. I'm going to give it a double and click OK. Now, the other thing that I want to think about, well, let's think about this. If I just add up the park buffer and the sidewalk buffer, well, that means they're both going to have the same weight. Okay? What I care about, and when I talk about with different people, being closer to parking is going to be a lot more important than being close to a sidewalk because we can walk over grass or whatever. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make the park have a value of 30% or 30 points versus a sidewalk buffer of 20. Okay, so I can go through and weight this accordingly. Okay, so I can do a field calculator. And while I'm here, I'm going to do 2 times my sidewalk buffer plus 3 times my parking buffer. That means my parking buffer is going to count, it's going to be 1.5 times more. I have a weight of 3 versus a weight of 2 for my sidewalk buffer. And keep in mind, if my maximum values are 10, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have values that go from 0 all the way up to 50. So 50 is going to be 2 times 10 plus 3 times 10, which is 50. Okay, And you can start to see here, even things that have parking values of 10, they're going to account for a little bit more than parking va sidewalk values of 10. They're going to account for a little bit more. So it's going to be weighted, this parking is going to be weighted a little bit more. And keep in mind, I can add in a number of other buffers or other considerations that I take in. I'm only working with two right here. So this is fairly basic and fairly simple here. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to go through and calculate these. I'm going to sort these from highest to lowest. I've got one here that's 50 all the way down to 5 here. Okay, and you can see the ones that are 5 are kind of near the periphery of campus. And I'll kind of I'll drag this down a little bit here so I can start to look at where they are in, rela or in relation to my labs. And my uh, what I'm going to care about is we're looking for a particular building here. But when I go all the way to the top, we can start to see the areas, the spatial areas that satisfy both of these. Okay, and when I zoom in here, we can start to look at where these are. You know, these ar areas in blue here satisfy both the areas that are close to sidewalks and also close to parking lots here. Okay, and my main thing is I want to start to look at buildings. These areas, these buildings right here that satisfy both here. So if I zoom in here, I can start to see, we can see the Mary Town Center. Okay, and these are areas that have Wi-Fi that are close to both, that earn scores of 50 here. Okay, and if I click on my little I button, okay, for my buildings, okay, this is the Mary Towns Complex here. Okay, over here, this is Eagle Landing as I go across the street here. Okay, so these areas here, and what I can eventually start to do is, I can start to weight these and color these in accordingly. Okay, I can look at my symbology. I can look at quantities. And I can go down to this score that I just created here. Uh, you can look at the classifying. Look at a nice standard distribution that we have here. And I'll color these in accordingly here. So now I can start to look at a map, okay, because these are going to be spatial intersections here. And I'll hit my clear button here. So these areas in dark here have the highest. If I really want to, I can tweak these a little bit, where I can do a Find interval here, and I can uh, type in the word 49 right here. So, and I can move these up a little bit and down a little bit, however I want. Okay, so I'm moving these up, anything up from about 10 or so. We're gonna see here. Okay. So now we can start these areas. See these areas in dark blue? These are the very highest ones here. Okay, in the very darkest blue, these are the areas that earn scores of 54 as it applies to both the sidewalk buffer 
and the parking buffer. And these are spatial units here. So we can look at areas over here that are dark, areas over here that are dark. Down near the education building, on this part of campus, it's dark here. Okay, These areas that are light here, because they're re relatively far from parking. So from here, we can start to look at areas that are going to be most prone based on our particular criteria here, which is just proximity to parking decks and also proximity to sidewalks. There's lots, lots of other considerations that we can take in. And we can look at the spatial areas that include both of these here. Okay.